Welcome back to the channel. I'm Scotty G back at it again. I've heard so many times in discussion groups, relationship groups, polarity groups, these other things, many people wonder what healthy relationships look like, lasting relationships. Today, what I'd like to do instead of quoting studies, surveys, stats, let's do something a little different and I'll tell you a little story. I'm a doc with 20 years of experience in the exam room. In that time frame, I've seen give or take right around 80,000 patients in that time frame. Having interactions and short conversations with patients and the general public is one of the perks of my job. And frankly, one of the more enjoyable things about what I do. I've met people from all walks of life in that small little room that's so special. You see people at their worst, you see people at their best, you see people in their normal day-to-day -day lives, and you can have a nice little chat that doesn't last very long, but in some cases it can be very, very powerful. I've seen homeless dudes, I've seen prisoners in chains, I've seen female CEOs, you name it, I've talked to them, and that's the beauty of the line of work that I do. A few days ago, I was in the middle of patient care, uh, it was running a little bit behind, you know, like many docs do. So I came out of an exam room and I looked down the hallway to see where my next patient was. And I see an elderly gentleman, uh, probably in the neighborhood of about 95 years old. And what caught my eye was what he was doing. He was standing up in front of the mirror that's right next to the door and to the entry of the exam room. And he was making funny faces at himself. <laughs> and I was like, what are you, what are you doing? You know, in my head, because I didn't say anything because he didn't see me. And I thought it was awesome. A lot of patients, a lot of times they'll walk up, uh, they'll get out of the chair, they'll walk up to the front to walk back and forth, because some people just don't like sitting still. Some people can get stiff. I thought that's what he was doing. And maybe even maybe checking to see if he's got anything in his teeth. And I couldn't have been more wrong. I was loving it at the time. And he didn't see me watching him. And honestly, I thought he was my next patient that was coming up. I was wrong. As I walked into the exam room, I saw the actual patient in the middle of the room. And she was a 95-year-old woman, very tiny, very frail. And she was sitting in, a, in her wheelchair. What I noticed immediately was the giant smile on her face. And, and she was giggling. That's when I realized what the old man was doing. He wasn't walking around. He wasn't stiff. He was making funny faces at his wife to entertain her while they were waiting on me. It stopped me in my tracks. I was in awe of what I, was, what I just witnessed. And it was beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what long-lasting love looks like. Two 95-year-old people making funny faces at each other, giggling and smiling and spending what precious time they have together. That's what, that's what it looks like. So what I did, instead of just walking in, doing my normal thing, uh, starting the exam, I took her chart, I put it on the countertop, and I just sat down. I was all ears at that point, and I just started asking questions. First question is the obvious one. How long have we been married? 75 years, they both said, with smiles on their faces. 75 years, y'all. That's incredible. That is perhaps maybe the longest marriage I'd ever heard of. Next question, how many children do you have? They both answered, eight children. 16 grandchildren and 20 great grandchildren. <laughs> they were busy individuals, probably still are at this point. And then my favorite question What's the secret to having a long lasting marriage like you've had? She piped in. She's 95 years old. I have that picture in your head. She told me, accepting the person you're with for who they are. Don't try to change them. And what's the most important thing? Laughing together 
often. And I was in awe when she said that. She took the words right out of my mouth. That's that's the advice that I give many people in my coaching, in relationship coaching, and honestly in career coaching as well. Life is short. Enjoy it. Incredible people. So they went on saying that you're going to have tough times, you're going to have good times, but as long as you have more good times than bad times, it's going to even out. It always ends up being just fine. The bad times will always pass. Once you get to a certain point in your marriage, you know you're going to have bad times. You're going to have good times. Again, they took the words straight out of my mouth. It just blew me away. You're going to have bad times in marriage. You're going to have great times in marriage. But as long as the good times outrank the bad times, all is well. All is good. That was an experience I will never forget. I will cherish it forever. I wanted to share it with y'all because like I said, most of the time in coaching, when I'm talking to people, many times they came from broken homes. They didn't know what a relationship like that would look like. They frankly don't have a whole lot of hope that they can make it into their elderly years like that. And I'm here to help you. But I'm telling you, that couple is what long lasting love looks like. And it's, it's a goal that I'd love to have for all of you, including myself, incredible people. So if you like this content, please like, share, and subscribe. I've got a Facebook group, Marriage Isn't Dead private group. Take a look at it. Free to play. Come on in. Let's talk it out. If you're having troubles, if you're going well in your marriage, if you want to help others, come on in. Free to play. I welcome everyone. I know today was a pretty short one, but I wanted to share this story with you. It inspired me, and hopefully it will inspire you. So until next time, be better than you were yesterday, and be desirable.